All righty. Hi, and welcome to the 2022 Epic Network Conference. This is our 11th annual conference, and we are so delighted to have you all here. My name is Ada Inman. I am the Epic N Program Support Coordinator. First, it is important for us to know our attendees and the history of the places they represent. So much of what we do is place-based and people-focused. So in the chat, please introduce yourself, tell us where you are calling from, and please mention your Indigenous host land if applicable. While you are doing that, I'm going to share just a couple of logistic notes. So if you have event questions during the session, please use either the Whova chat or the Zoom chat throughout the session. Marshall and I will be monitoring both. In addition to that, after the session ends, you can ask Marshall and I anything through the Ask Organizers Anything tab within the community part of Whova. We'll also be monitoring this throughout the conference. Let me stop sharing. And now let me introduce our moderator for today's session, who will give us a brief overview of the conference ahead. Joel Rogers is the Epic Gen Chair and the Noam Chomsky Professor of Law, Political Science, Public Affairs, and Sociology at UW-Madison. He's also the director of both the Havens Wright Center for Social Justice and COWS. I work with Joel on many projects and it continues to be a great experience, so I'm delighted to introduce him today. Joel, please take it away. Oh, you're on mute. Hi, everybody. I I'm Joel. I I'm the chair of the board at Epic N. And um, there's already a miscommunication here. Uh, Ada, I thought you were going to walk through the agenda. But, but in broad terms, in broad terms, uh, uh, day one is about uh, our growth and our impact and, uh, and some new changes we're introducing in terms of quality. Uh, uh, day two is... Uh, um, basically about drilling down uh, around the SDGs and, uh, and equity concerns. And day three is basically about opportunities that are coming up, uh, which we want to get everybody organized to take advantage of in very, very broad terms. There's a lot more diversity in the agenda than those top line summaries of the themes uh, on the three days. Uh, um, but... Uh, but, but we want to get started this morning just with the intro on some of the growth and the impacts of. And with me on this panel are a bunch of great organizers for the different regions of EPIC. And what we wanted to do is to show you uh, the stuff that we're doing, not just in North America, with which many of you are familiar. Uh, we got Marshall on for that. And if, he has, if we have time, we'll, we'll have him do that at the end. But we've also got people from... Uh, from Asia, where we've gone uh, relatively recently, from Africa, where we've been for a couple of years, but are rebooting in different ways, and now in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, where we're trying, where we had some presence for a while, but are trying to vastly expand that uh, in the next year. And those people, if I could introduce them, are R.K. Uh, uh, Fandawang Pakti. Uh, Kay has a different uh, first name, um, uh, 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 but, but he allows idiots like myself and linguistically challenged people just to call him by his first name, uh, his nickname, Kay. So Kay, maybe wave to people so they can see where you are. Uh, and then uh, Mazimi Marisa, who is a, a new, uh, a longtime friend of EPIC, but is now the new Africa coordinator. Uh, a, K is the, is the Asia coordinator, Mazimi is the Africa coordinator. And then filling in for a number of colleagues, but, but, and thanks for doing that, Christopher. We've got Christopher Petron uh, Savarano, who many of you may know from the San Diego uh, EPIC program, uh, but Christopher is doing double time, helping us with a number of other people in doing the market research and and uh, I don't know, preparing uh, uh, the field in Latin America and the Caribbean. And he's joined by several other people uh, uh, that we put on effectively at a staff capacity, at least temporarily to do that. And I'll introduce them uh, at the end of my remarks, but Christopher, thanks for doing this. And then Marshall, uh, Marshall Wave. I think everyone in the universe of EPIC knows Marshall. Uh, but if we have time at the end, uh, I'll ask Marshall to say something about uh, what I want to mostly talk about, which is the growth uh, 
in the network and then new things that uh, the central office in in international aid speak, they always call it uh, uh, the secretariat. Uh, I'm always uncomfortable with that term. So let's just call it the mothership or something or other has been doing uh, uh, for you and with you uh, in the last year. So let me uh, just share my slides. Let me see if I can manage to do this. Let me share my screen. And what I want to do at the beginning is uh, uh, just walk through uh, progress, uh, you know, not so much from our founding, but, uh, but in particular over uh, the last uh, year. We're nearing the end of fiscal year uh, since we go from uh, July of the preceding year to, uh, uh, to the end of June of the, of the year name. We're in fiscal year 22 right now. Um, 2022. And I just want to go over some some of the progress we've been making and introduce you again. And this again is network wide. This is not uh, this is not in any particular region. Okay, so uh, in broad terms, um, uh, you know, we, we are still you should really think of us more as a startup than an established organization. The model has been around for a, a while now, almost 12 years, but we really have only gotten organized as a, as a network uh, relatively recently. Remember, we were not even incorporated until five years ago, and we didn't have our uh, our C3 IRS status uh, awarded to us until uh uh, April of four years ago. So just about four years ago is really when you can think of us having started. And now I'm having some trouble advancing my slides for some reason. Okay. All right. Uh, right now we are basically four or five different regional networks. Uh, we've got the North America one, which has been going for a while. Uh, 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 as mentioned, we, we've been in Africa now for a bit. Uh, we've recently gone into Asia, uh, and uh, and then we're intending to go into Latin America and the Caribbean. And that's how you should think of us as an international organization. And we're fairly big in terms of individual participation. Uh, I think the best effective measure of that is that we've got uh, now more than 400 people who are regular users, registered regular users of the member commons, and they come from all over uh, the world. In terms of actual programs, uh, the growth has been uh, pretty impressive. Uh, since we started uh, in 718, the number of programs has more than doubled. As you see, it's, it's, uh, it's up 164%. Uh, in, uh, and, and telling our, the story of these programs, uh, we're also getting better. You know, we were a largely a volunteer-driven organization, but uh, and that's what the secretariat or home office or mothership or whatever preferred language you want. Let me know what the preferred language is, is always trying to do with all the different programs. Uh, through Ada's efforts in particular in the last year or so, uh, we've tremendously increased the number of people who are telling their own story. First, by telling uh, the story of their program, we call them program stories, and then also telling the stories of the projects and, and, the, and the partnerships that they've engaged in. Let's talk about the number of partnerships now. What are the, what are the current figures on that? Well, uh, that's also increased uh, since the beginning of this fiscal year, uh, about 20% at least reported ones. We've now done, we've engaged with, this is the number you can now use, more than 350 uh, uh, communities uh, around the world, uh, incredibly diverse uh, uh, in their demographics, and also importantly for a lot of your local people, uh, their politics, you know, from red to blue to use US language, uh, from right wing to left wing to use conventional uh, uh, language in the world. And uh, that's where some of the partnerships are. And as you see, we're, we're, we haven't, you know, we have a continual problem in documentation, which is uh, an understandable problem because people doing the work don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it and then revising it and, and getting it approved and stuff. But if you don't tell the work, no one else is going to know about it. And your ability to do the work is really improved by our ability to publicize what you've been doing. So anyway, we've got uh, these partners. And the project stories uh, is the key reporting thing that we always emphasize. And they're the number of project stories, which again is up 
considerably, uh, even this year in terms of the reported stories, is now up to, uh, well, it's close to 1,800 uh, projects. That is individual projects coded by SDGs uh, that have made some progress on those SDGs in some way. Let me uh, just pause to let you contemplate the remark by Andrea Fox, who's known EPIC and been involved in EPIC for a long time, first in her days at ICMA and then, and then elsewhere. And she's currently actually a town manager in Maryland, um, a big friend of EPIC, but uh, uh, a nice quote from, from Andrea. Anyway, so we've got about 1,800 projects, 350 communities. That's the bottom line thing. And uh, uh, and 65 to 70 uh, actual active programs now. And these, these projects, again, as I think you all know, are all coded by the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, you, you, I'm sure you recall those, but just to show you the typical sign, that's about ending poverty, um, ending hunger, uh, getting people decent health care, uh, decent education, have, having, you know, fair level of gender equality, improving the environment in all sorts of ways, improving justice institutions, uh, making sure that, uh, um, that cities in particular, where most of humanity is heading, are, are, are well run and, and resilient, you know, and a variety of other things. In between and after these 17 very egalitarian goals, very, very egalitarian, remember the or if you don't know, the, the, the motto of the Sustainable Development Goals is uh, uh, leave no one behind. They're, they're all for all of humanity, which is part of the reason why virtually all of humanity's representatives, as represented by the 173 nations in the UN General Assembly, have endorsed these goals. And, you know, time is running out on their achievement. I and virtually everybody in the universe thinks they'll probably move back the time of actual achievement, but I don't, I don't see any interest in moving away from those goals. These are the goals of humanity and EPIC is here to, uh, to help it uh, progress uh, on them. Anyway, that's what it looks like in terms of our projects, the sustainable cities and communities. Uh, one, one, of the, one of the SDGs is, uh, as you see, it's sort of an outlier among uh, the projects, but we, we've got stuff in all of the different uh, goal categories of the, of the UN uh, framework. Okay, now in the last year or two, uh, but we wanna emphasize just the last year, just to bring it up to date, we, we have a variety of new resources that we want you guys to know about. Uh, one is, and Marshall in particular has done a ton of work on this, so we re and it's been very much responsive to, to things we've heard from projects, like just tell us how to use all these different things that, that we have available to us. Uh, these are resource pages on a variety of things. So the new thing is that you now have pages on these things that you can go to on the on the on the website and and uh, find out about how to use it. And that goes from things that have been around forever since more or less uh, uh, the rebooted uh, or app again uh, as a formal network has started. For example, how to use our Qualtrics license, which again is available free to all you guys. We pay a bunch of money for it. We want all the members to use it. And, and that can save you a lot of time uh, with your local situation. You've got free use of the group license that Epic gives on, on Qualtrics, which enables you to survey just a ton of different things from participating students and faculty to communities to anything you want to survey, basically. And then uh, I think this is a relatively new thing, but we're in various ways, as you'll see, trying to locate funding opportunities for all of you. And this is a way to, to get in touch with us or to use, uh, you know, to use Epic more effectively in, uh, in your own fundraising. And then there's a bunch of stuff that's been around for a while around uh, how, how you uh, can use Epic more effectively in marketing your program. You know, what are the requirements of respecting the brand of Epic, which is increasingly valuable in international development and, and we hope uh, uh, philanthropy circles. Uh, 
But then, uh, but just to give you a little bit more detail, uh, there's a bunch of stuff on technical assistance uh, of various sorts, uh, which we wanted to highlight here. Uh, there's a, and we've done a bunch of technical assistance just just this year. I mean, the year's not quite over. We've got uh, you know a few weeks left still, but but basically, you know, more than I don't know, roughly three times a week, there's one or another technical assistance meeting going on between the mothership and one or another uh, program. Uh, the other thing is we've done a lot more webinars and, and we also have webinar and course resource pages. Uh, uh, this is the webinar resource page. It'll uh, show you uh, all the different webinars that we have done. You've got recordings of virtually everything that's up there. It'll be a guide to you and it'll uh, enable you to access more. And then there's the courses resource page and there are lots of new courses as well. Uh, and then there's a, a whole bunch of new YouTube videos. Uh, there have been eight new ones published uh, just in, in this academic year. And, and there's a course page on that actually showing you how to find, uh, find those things. Uh, the number of webinars, uh, community of practice meetings, uh, network calls, et cetera, is running at least, uh, well, well over. These are ep epic wide as well over uh, once a week. So that's a fairly low, high level of, of engagement. Uh, there's the funding resource page again, I mentioned that, there's a re repetition. Oh, oh, this is a, we could brag on this a little bit. Uh, there, there were five programs in the last year as a, as a direct result of our assistance that collectively got, you know, more than 10 million bucks. That's the programs, that's not the mothership, that, that's actual programs. And that would, you know, that's a very, very concrete way in which the, uh, the center or home office or mothership, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll start calling it by its real name, secretary is, is helping individual programs. And we want you to exploit that more. Uh, we want you all to get richer and, and uh, be able to hire more staff. Uh, Okay, on the resource page. Oh, the other thing is uh, the project library, uh, the technical, the project library is familiar, webinars, courses, and, and nine more. Uh, the other thing we've started in the last year is uh, these communities of practice. We had, uh, we had uh, three different topics for communities of practice. This is a bunch of, and this came from the, the program suggested to the board. We went over it, approved it. It was led by, you know, Marshall and Ada, of course, helped, but it had individual leadership in each of the uh, communities of practice. One focused on outreach to rural communities, one focused on, on getting better at assessment and evaluation, one focused on, which is going to be a theme uh, in this conference again, on getting better at engaging communities, whether it's uh, Laurie Dupree Brown's uh, five ways to do a 360 approach to the SDGs or or whatever, uh, on which, by the way, we have a, uh, uh, a little YouTube thing up uh, in that YouTube channel as well, or, or other means. But we want definitely to continue and get better and better and better uh, at using the UN SDGs. Anyway, those are three topics of the communities of practice. We did that too. Uh, the assess, and then independent of the communities of practice, uh, Marshall and Ada did a and this too, I believe is recorded, tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm virtually certain it's recorded, an assessment and evaluation workshop, which is a pretty detailed thing. It's three different parts. All of this requires uh, work and programming. Oh, they, here finally we have the SDG YouTube playlist. That's, where you, that's a picture of that. And then we've done a new thing, which is uh, we talk forever about keeping track of people after they leave the program or just a sort of an alumni association thing. No one really likes the alumni thing, but certainly there are, at this point, lots and lots of people who've had some sort of epic experience and it's way past time. And I'm personally really delighted we've finally gotten this organized. So we now have an epic network uh, community, uh, uh, a group set up at LinkedIn. So I'd really urge all of you to find that in LinkedIn and here's how to do it. And this slideshow itself, by the way, will all be up for you if you want to look at it quickly, or you want to look at it after the conference. I know I'm writing through it quickly, just in the interest of time. But anyway, so we have this uh, this LinkedIn group uh, as well, which will be 
really fantastic. And then a very, very important thing is going to come up later today, and it's going to be really critical to our future growth, is a process of EPIC program certification. Uh, we still haven't settled on the dues thing, and uh, we keep kicking that, that can down the road because all of our friends, especially outside the U.S., but in the U.S. as well, say that the costs of the pandemic are still real, and we have to be attentive to those. Uh, but the certification is going to be a, a very basic currency of, of operating in the network. And given the amount of money we expect to have outside the network, it, it's going to be the gateway to that. So that is really worth paying attention to. And that thing comes up, uh, I believe, this afternoon in just about three hours from now. Okay, but back to uh, the network. The other thing we tried to do over the years, but with greater intensity, uh, it continues to grow, is to make strategic alliances with other organizations. And, and the most advanced though, thing, they're, they're actual partners. They do joint programming with us. They do joint uh, funding applications with us. They're, they are often in our conferences. We're often in theirs, et cetera. Then there are sort of allies or, or close working friends whom we trust and can do deals with but are, are less sort of permanent. And then there are friends, people at, who at least ex agree to, you know, uh, to spread our social media among their links. We do the same for them. Um, and well, they're, they're friends. They're, they're, not, they're not real allies in particular campaigns and they're not long-term strategic partners. Uh, uh, but, but, but they're certainly friendly. And we have really expanded the number of serious partnerships uh, uh, with ELGL, engaging local leaders, with Collaboratory, which is uh, an organization a lot of you know of that does careful mapping for universities of, of uh, service learning type things at the place. A very important one, which we recent, only recently concluded with ICLEI, uh, that stands for the International Council of Local Environmental Initiatives, but no one can remember that. So they just think of it as a network of sustainable cities. Uh, that's a very big one for us. We've been trying to get that settled for a long time. So we now have a formal relationship with ICLEI, which is the major international organization of cities trying to do something like what we think every city in the world should do. And then Thriving Earth Exchange, Start International. They're the people often paying Mazzini's uh, uh, paycheck and actually Kay's paycheck as well through a deal with GAN. Very close relations with Start. In Latin America in particular, in relations now with IAI, which is a, a long-standing uh, important institute for research and technical assistance in, in that region. And then of course the UNEP GAN. And then the allies, uh, you know, they may be more familiar with ICMA, uh, the Sustainable Solutions Network, uh, the broader UN agency, uh, uh, UN uh, EP, Second Nature, although Second Nature may soon be coming more of a partner because we're trying to do a joint uh, money thing with them. And, and then uh, our very old friends have been around forever, uh, Future Earth. And then there are a variety of other friends that are out there. Okay, anyway, I just want you to know that we're talking to all these different organizations, trying to do joint deals with them all the time. And I think EPIC has, as a result of those outreach efforts, uh, I think it's considerably more visible uh, in, uh, in relevant rooms uh, as something that can really do something fairly big, very grounded, uh, involving the next generation centrally uh, uh, to advance, uh, you know, love and kindness and decency and sustainability and all the good stuff in the world. And part of that has been to add on a few additional staff. Uh, you know, all these people work uh, incredibly hard. We, we pay them almost nothing, as you probably know. But I just want to actually, you know, just see their faces and call out their names. Mizimi, you just uh, met on this channel. You got Kay right there. Uh, Ada, I think you already know, she introduced. Uh, you, of course, got Marshall. Uh, Max, you probably haven't heard, he works with me at Cows, but he, he's been working a lot on, on Epic. And then you've got, uh, uh, you got Christopher and his uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, you got Andrea uh, Berga-Chavez, uh, you've got, uh, 
I'm not seeing the circle here. I don't know why it's going on here. Oh, oh Bryce Bray, great guy. We got hand or look, got to know him through Gan, who's now doing most of the Brazilian stuff for us. Uh, uh, Christopher, whom you're about to hear from, if I ever stop talking. Uh, and then uh, Maria Inez uh, Carabajal, uh, who's uh, in the, you know, the connoisseur portion of, of Latin America. Anyway, so just to conclude, uh, in, in terms of the future, so I think that represents a fair amount of work. I hope you agree. Again, kick the tires at this conference and forever after and anything just said here, go on the website and, and uh, please rip out those resource pages and try to make the, the thing work. Th just three quick things I want to highlight uh, as challenges coming up, especially in the next year. One is uh, getting ourselves organized to, uh, uh, to compete uh, on that very big pile of money, uh, which now has been appropriated, but now we have to get them to actually spend it, and in particular to spend it on us. Uh, uh, in the U this is appropriate only to the U.S. folks, sorry. Uh, but that HUD grant, uh, that, that could be our ticket to really becoming more, much more established on a more permanent basis. Uh, has been a focus of a lot of activity, so that time is right now. The other thing is this, the importance of this member certification discussion. Again, it's gonna be in about two and a half hours from now uh, at this conference. Please, please, please pay attention to that. It reflects a lot of work from a lot of board members and other people over the last year to try to uh, really get something that everyone thought was fair and uh, and robust, something that we that we can represent to the rest of the world. Yeah, an epic program, it means something, here's what it means. That's a really important thing for us in terms of our credibility uh, and, and quality assurance. And then the third thing, again and again and again, is the SDGs. You know, we committed to doing that as the framework for all of our engagement. Now, I don't know, three years ago, We've got trainings of various sorts introduced two years ago. We've tried to supplement those one in the last year, uh, but this is an ongoing process and we're going to be at you forever about this, making this more and more comfortable to folks in North America. It's been much less a problem everywhere else in Africa, Asia, Latin America, because in this part of the reason that we adopted the SDGs, that is the sort of lingua franca of international development. But we've really got to get everybody better up to speed, not just on the SDGs, you all know the SDGs, but then all the techniques of engaging people around them. And most important for the, for the, the center office, reporting and also measuring progress. And I, I hope to be getting you some stuff, especially on the baseline measurement stuff. I don't want to announce that quite yet, but it's a response to a question we got from everybody all the time. How do we say where we started from? I think we'll, we'll soon be able to get you stuff, at least for uh, the U.S. On, on reliably reporting that. Okay, so that's all I got. Sorry to rush through that. Uh, again, this slideshow uh, will be up on the website very soon. All right, let me stop sharing. And I don't want to go for any questions right now. I want to get K, uh, his shot at uh, summarizing things uh, right away. So, so K, tell us about uh, Asia and then Mazimi. And when you're done, K, just hand over to Mazimi. We'll do Africa update. And then Mazimi, when you're done, uh, go to Christopher. And then if we've got time, Marshall, I'm going to ask you to update folks a bit on the U.S. case. Okay, K, take it away. All right. Thank you so much, um, Joel. Thank you so much. We actually have... Um, the first session in my afternoon, so very late at night for most of you, uh, Epic Asia and Africa update. So I'm going to rerun that to all of you again. So this is the update from Asia. Edda, can I have the next slide, please? So as you know, and in case you don't, uh, the Epic Asia Pacific Partnership, we partner with the Ministry of Environment Government Japan, driving Earth Exchange, as Joel has already mentioned, Second Nature, UNEP, especially the, G the GAN, ICLI, START, and UNFCCC. Next, please. Um, progressed over the past year, we currently have about 25 active people 
and 11 active, active programs, if you break down by country, it's mostly concentrated in Southeast Asia, which is one in Indonesia, two in the Philippines, three in Malaysia, one in Nepal, three in Thailand, and one in Vietnam. If you break the organization type or whole type within university, you have one polytechnic, four research centers, and six department faculty or schools. And on top of this, we have about three additional interested department that will join this coming months. Um, I was hoping to travel sooner, but I still didn't have a chance. So the three program unfortunately come from Thailand, but I hope to get more people from abroad to join uh, EPIC as well. Next, please, Yeda. So just a really, really quick recap. So of course we have Chiang Mai University in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Thammasat University paired with Hatyai in Southern Thailand, Asian Institute of Technologies paired with Thaklong Municipality, which is close to my university, and University Education Sultan Aldris, which is paired with a city called, Sim, uh, I cannot remember, Seberang Perai, which is in Pinang State, University of Kuala Lumpur, which paired with a city in Malacca State, University of San, University Sai Malaysia, also paired with a city of Pinang. Anqiang University in Vietnam, paired with Long Suyen in southern part of Vietnam, Polytechnic Nagari Manado, pairing with the city of Manado in the island of Sulawesi, uh, University of the Philippine Los Banos, paired with a city called Calamba, Iloilo Science and Technologies, and university, uh, university paired with the city of Dumagas in, in the Philippines as well, and University of Kathmandu, of course, paired with Kathmandu in Nepal. Next, please. So the next will be just a quick update on what they are doing. So the one in Kuala Lumpur is working on wet market waste management. Next, please. Uh, the one in uh, the University of Science Malaysia is working on zero waste as well. Waste seems to be one of the most interested topic recently. And in my own um, research, also waste management seems to be something that is very, and most of the people are very interested at the moment. Next, please. And this one is quite interesting. It's urban. When we received the, the proposal, we were quite surprised because the picture doesn't look very urban. So this area is technically suburban. So in, in this part of the world, we have a characteristic called Desakota. So when we say suburban, it's not really suburban in the US sense. You see like a housing estates located next to the rice field, located next to a factories. So this area, uh, the lecturer told me that in, in, her, in, in her area, obviously, they're diminishing area for agriculture and the, also the yield per farm is really low. So she's trying to increase and help the cities by improving the urban farming, suburban farming, adding students from, um, and this one is actually from human computer interaction, the development of mobile applications and system analysis and design. And the most interesting part is the uh, student who engage in this program are mostly women. Actually, we have a student present today as well from this university and she is also a woman. So um, trying to empower women is obviously one of the SDGs goal. And I'm glad to see that there are a lot of women in, uh, taking part in the tech programs. Next, please. Just to go very quickly. So Long Su Yen in Vietnam working on flooding uh, and helping the city master development plan on smart water cities planned. Next, please. This one is my university. So obviously, Thammasat University working with Hat Yai municipality on green cities. So trying to increase green space in the city, but at the same time, the green space can be functioned as climate adaptation as well, especially phenomena such as urban heat island or flooding. Next, please. We also have another interesting case because we have a uh, lecturer from environmental science who teach analytical chemistry joining the program and trying to use her skills to help the city. So in this particular city, if you have been to Chiang Mai, it's a very famous tourist city. It's surrounded by a moat. So the water quality in the moat are usually, is usually bad. So the city had to spend a lot of money trying to analyze what is the pollutants in the water in order to um, clear or to clean the water. But after partnering with this university course, obviously the lecturer asked the student to go and collect water. A student bring the water back to the lab, analyze everything. The student report their work to the lecturer. The lecturer 
upgrade the stores and then send it to the city. So the city know exactly what are the pollutants and they can decide how they can treat the water more efficiently and cost effectively. Next, please. And then we have waste management. As I mentioned, waste management seems to be the theme that is very uh, most people interesting, interested in. This one is a master degree program in Asian Institute of Technologies. Next, please, in Thailand. This is uh, University of Philippine Los Banos uh, talking about disaster preparedness, um, working with communication approach in development programs and development perspectives. So student in the development school. Next, please. This one is reduce vulnerability to climate change in Philippines as well, but this time they are working with social marketing and communication students. Obviously working with students from the communication department can be more effective in telling the people what to look for and how they can improve their life and adapt to climate change as opposed to the cities doing it by themselves. The communication is not as effective and cannot really penetrate most people who live in the city. Next, please. And also in um, Polytechnic Negeri Manado, Polytechnics in Indonesia also work with flood early warning systems. And also work with students who work in the engineering department. So improve real-time flood prevention systems. Students get to maintain, monitor, and replace flood, uh, flooding early warning systems. And also interestingly, again, uh, we have a, a female student repre representing the, the university as well. And I, I was told that a lot of students are women in engineering as well. Next, please. And this is obviously very last, working on unsustainable urban expansion in Kathmandu city in Nepal. Thank you. Next, please. So that a very quick recap of the students' uh, 11 program stories, which I have already published online. I also published four partnership stories. So one in, in I will... I aim to publish more, so there will be more coming. But right now, I have one on smart farming, one on green public GS, zero ways towards sustainable community and mapping inundated area for sustainable drainage. Next, please. So um, program or website that already use the EPIC N logos, I count, there might be more, but I physically go to their website or go to their material and count. There are get six out of 11. And I provide, it's probably more, but this 17 is official technical assistance. And I also participate in several events such as Gaboshona, EPA, uh, APAN, EPIC Asia, and also Hadia Municipality. I went to present the, the EPIC model AIT recently uh, supporting, I cannot really remember the organization, UNFCCC as well, SRI, and we already have 10 monthly calls, and we also have two EPIC Asia advisory report. Next, please. Um, okay, I ignored the top one, it's wrong. The, the lower one, other outcomes. So obviously we start the EPIC Asia advisory group, um, the Polytechnic in Indonesia secure further funding for her projects. Sultan Idris Education University is expanding the scale of its program, support from the university and also the cities. A professor in U University of Philippine Los Banos get to exhibit her work in UN Summer Academy. And Iloilo Science Technologies, after uh, working with us, they also secure collaboration with GISAT, which is an organization from Germany funding development programs. Next, please. And future plan for EPIC in Asia. So obviously I will continue to work with EPIC and hopefully more, but at least until May of uh, next year, I will continue to write up the seed grant report, focusing on, on active program and supporting their operations, build relations with new university and local government to continue supporting those who want to start the programs. And as I say, three, hopefully all three of them will join. And, I will try to encourage them to join the monthly meeting so they can let us know what they are working on. And just to be sure, just to let you know that these three do not get funding from us. So they really want to join by themselves. Next, please, which is the last slide. So obviously, I also let everybody know that there are funding opportunity to help out with their program. So one is from Asia Pacific Network for Global Change Research. Since many of the program work on climate change, this is provided by organization in Japan. Global EBA Fund is obviously from UNEP and Newton Fund from the British Council. 
the UK Climate Adaptation Resilient Claire from the German, um, the government of Canada, GISAT, as I already mentioned, Germany, the National Research Foundation, I was referred by UNEP that I should include this, and this is funding from South Korea, and lastly in the States, they every year annually they have like a training for young Southeast Asian re leader initiatives, and I highly encourage uh, most of the program leader if they're still young to kind of join the programs, and that's is that's are the updates from Asia, a very quick update from me. Thank you so much, Kay. Uh, so Mazimi, have you got slides? Uh, take us away. Yes, I do. Thank you, Kay, and thank you to Joel. And I'll run through these very quickly. We can go to the next slide. So Epic Africa Network has done things differently. This is just talking about a bit of a bio, but since 2017, there have been three trainings that have targeted city and university pairs. Um, so this year, since I came on board and we're trying to revive the network, we've decided to do things a little bit differently. Um, so we are looking to firstly expand the EPIC uh, Africa network although we already have a base in terms of uh, mostly three pioneer cities, that is the city of Durban, uh, the city of Lusaka and Nairobi, who were the first to implement EPIC programs. But they had been a bit of a lull uh, due to COVID, mostly because for most of our programs, um, it seemed um, COVID disrupted uh, the or restricted movement uh, uh, rather on campus and therefore students were at home and therefore coordinating or working on implementing EPIC programs was quite limited. So since this year, we then reached out to those cities that had been trained on EPIC and those uh, make a total of 20 cities. We can go to the next slide. Out of those 20 who know about EPIC or have been trained on EPIC, we gathered interest from 10 cities highlighted in this slide. And they basically said, we are raring to go. We want to be part of the network. We're willing to implement uh, EPIC programs. And they also have coordinators. They also showed, besides the interest, they also showed some sort of movement on the ground. Many of these cities have actually um, rendered or at least considered epic work on in their budgets, particularly from the city uh, uh, partners. Some of them have signed a memoranda of understanding between the universities and the city to try and define some of the work that they can do to the epic program. Let's move on. So out of these 10 cities, what we then decided to do was to concentrate on six Southern African uh, cities. So as I said, right now we have 10 cities. So that number of active people, 20, represents the city and university coordinators in each of those cities. So that's why there's 20 there. And it amounts to a 60% uh, positive change because initially we, were, we only had three cities, Durban, Lusaka, Nairobi, three cities, but now we have 10. Okay, and then the number of active programs, it's four in the past year that is uh, looking at June 2021 to date. And these include the city of Durban, Lusaka. Nairobi, which started off in 2017, is not active at the moment. So we've added two cities that we can say have active programs. That is the city of Harare and Kampala. Okay, we can move on. And then in terms of uh, progress, again, the number of stories that have been published, they were no stories published in 2021. So those two are from 2020, but we've had partner organizations, some of which Joel mentioned, which are supporting uh, the EPIC effort in Africa and they have been publishing um, uh, stories or talking about EPIC or talking about the expansion in Africa and they are highlighted there. And then program stories, um, there is one on the GAN 
uh, website, is, um, but also published on the EPIC uh, website. We can move on. And um, the other progress, as I was describing those six um, uh, uh, cities, we've been able to talk about refresher courses, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in the outcomes, but also some of the plans uh, we have. But we have been quite active in terms of presentations, um, having been part of some of those conferences, uh, including this one. But the one I want to really highlight is the Sustainability Research and Innovation Conference, which is on next week, um, the whole of next week. Because in there, we have invited Durban and Lusaka. Remember I said they were part of the pioneer cities. And what we have done is put together a training program that's sort of like an EPIC 102 because those two particular cities are looking to expand their EPIC work and not really start um, uh, from zero like the other ones. And then we've had monthly calls uh, in, in terms of uh, communication. Um, we have revived these this year so in April and May, we've had calls, we've had much more communication. And then of course, uh, as part of the secretariat and interim committee, we've had a lot of communication on a weekly, monthly uh, uh, basis, particularly with uh, our partners and also engaged in the EPIC advisor, advisory board and the EPIC Asia advisory board. And then in terms of outcome, uh, I'm happy that, um, uh, partnering with START, I am, uh, have come on board since February as the EPIC Africa coordinator, and we are trying to revive the, the network. So what we plan to do is to have these refresher courses, and we are starting with the Southern African cities, six Southern African cities, because we realize that we will have greater impact going to the cities training at least 20 people in the cities because they indicated to us that this will be more effective than say bringing pairs together in a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting because once there's a face to epic it will be easier for the coordinators to then convince their colleagues and their leadership let's move on so in terms of the plans we will continue expanding the epic network um, like I said, we are concentrating on Southern Africa, but we, the plan is to expand to other regions. We have cities in East and Central Africa that we have contacted either uh, in the face-to-face -face training or on one-on-one -on -one training and outreach, um, maybe one or two in West Africa, but we do want to expand more to those regions and more specific tailor-made training and then um, uh, eventually to North Africa. And we would love to have an EPIC Africa advisory board like our other counterparts and regions. We have worked on a communication strategy, which we will finalize and we'll be sharing with the members. And then of course, I talked about the refresher trainings. So in, uh, yeah, in essence, this, these are our updates. I think the next slide um, looks at funding opportunities, some of which uh, Kay has already mentioned. And then, of course, how to reach us. But yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I had seven minutes. So yeah, thanks. Over to Christopher. Thanks so much, Mazimi. OK, Christopher. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share my screen right now. So I'm going to talk about the uh, project to expand the EPIC model into Latin America. Um, I wanted to give a little uh, context on what has been done in Latin America before. And um, uh, click a couple of times, uh, Ada, please. Uh, so the first program to have interaction with uh, communities and, and universities in Latin America was the SAGE project, uh, which is the uh, EPIC program at San Diego State University. You know, we, we banked on the uh, uh, location of San Diego State University right across the border from Tijuana in Mexico. And we had the opportunity back in 2015 to start a uh, collaboration with the City of Tijuana Environmental Protection Office on a project called Community Park. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling uh, proud enough to call uh, the SAGE project the first Latin American <laughs> epic program, although it is in uh, the US. Um, 
And we started that uh, uh, project collaboration back in 2015. Uh, it lasted a, a, a couple of years, uh, 2015 and 16. And because also the, the closeness of San Diego State and Sage uh, project uh, with the Baja and, and, and Tijuana, we started uh, supporting uh, UABC, Universidad Autónoma de Baja California in, in Ensenada, also in, in Baja to, um, for them to implement their own program. And because of our influence, they um, uh, call this program Sage Cimarrones, which is their mascot at the university. And they uh, worked 2016-17 on a, a project with the city of uh, Ensenada. And uh, I believe also wasn't involved, but a, a couple of programs in Brazil started about 2017 and 18. Uh, and, and, and that was the first approach in Latin America. So we knew in, in Epic that there was interest and uh, a huge potential, of course, in, in Latin America uh, uh, to, to implement uh, the model, although with uh, plenty of differences. Could you uh, click uh, one more time, Ada, please? And um, uh, so 2022 was the opportunity um, uh, for the EPIC uh, to launch a, a, a program, Latin America and the Caribbean wide. Um, a, a slight difference uh, with uh, Asia and, and Africa is that uh, we didn't uh, uh, try to just go in and, and implement uh, programs or do trainings straight out of blue. Uh, we wanted to have a little bit, you know, because of, of the diversity and the uh, huge extension also of the region and the population is that we wanted to first gather some information on the region to uh, try to adapt the model uh, uh, better and, and going to the region with already uh, a plan and a lot of information to to help properly all, all the universities and organizations that want to implement the model or are, are interested. Uh, uh, please go to the next slide. Uh, and uh, in order to do this, because there's there's so many countries and 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 in such a diverse region, uh, epic, uh, as uh, Joel uh, mentioned. Is in, in a partnership with IAI and UNEP uh, to help, um, you know, gather all this information and, and raise momentum in, in the region. And that's why we uh, click a couple more times. Say that um, are collaborating in as, as a group uh, and, and divided up the, the region for a better understanding of it. We have the Central and uh, Caribbean regions that that I. Uh, coordinate that includes Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. And then uh, Andrea Chavez is uh, working with the Andes and Amazonian area of Latin America, including uh, Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, and uh, parts of the Amazonian Brazil. Um, Marines Carvajal, who is working in Cono Sur uh, subregion, uh, including Uruguay, Paraguay, Chile, and Argentina, and Bryce Bray uh, working uh, with uh, uh, all, all, all the different regions in Brazil. Uh, uh, click another time, data, please. Um, it's so, um, you know, part of, of, of the development of, of, of this uh, perspective research uh, approach to Latin America is just gather all the information and all the different uh, aspects of every country. We want to know, we want to learn what every university, uh, how every university or in, in, in the different regions are structured, how we can best implement the model in Latin America and what are their um, uh, main priorities and, and, and what are their wants so we can uh, uh, give them support on a very, very tailor-made um, uh, approach to Latin America. And what we did in every region is contact if, uh, uh, mainly universities, but also we've contacted a, a couple of other organizations and um, uh, local governments and speak to them about the EPIC model, have them uh, learn what the model uh, entails and, and how it works. Uh, it's not properly a training, but uh, kind of like a general information on, on how the model works and see uh, how they think it could be best implemented in the region. At the same time, we have been gathering information on from every organization we approach to see how they work, how they have 
how they are structured and as i said what what's their priorities and what what are their needs so that way we can think better uh, ahead of time and how we can match the model uh, uh with with latin american universities and of, and of course we're divided up in four teams because although latin america uh, can be seen as as one region you know mostly speaking either uh, Spanish or, or Portuguese and then the Caribbean, English and French. Um, uh, there's there's uh, a, a, lot, a lot of similarities, but also huge, huge differences in, in the diversity of people and institutions that live in the, live in the region uh, make uh, a, a huge opportunity for us to learn for them and, and, and try to in, include all those differences in, in that uh, different cultures into the model uh, to best implement it. Uh, a couple more cl clicks data please. So uh, what we've done uh, since the uh, project started in uh, back in May, um, we've approached uh, 15 countries uh, gathering their local information, their context, their challenges and opportunities. And uh, we're recording all those differences and uh, uh, all, their, all their needs and all their priorities. Uh, we've been investing time building trust with those uh, uh, communities and, and those universities uh, uh, to learn their, their capacities. Um, and one of the main objectives of, of this uh, uh, engagement with uh, universities in Latin America is that we want to propose uh, uh, right off the bat also um, uh, members of uh, advisory committee that will help us uh, with their contacts uh, uh, to spread the information of the EPIC model and, and help us better implement it uh, uh, in the future with, with uh, universities and communities. One more click, Ada, please. And uh, uh, to date, also, with, um, I, I can't speak, um, you know, about specific projects uh, yet because this is just the perspective stage of, of, of the approach of the project with Latin America. But I can say that we've uh, contacted more than 300 people all over those 15 countries and 50 universities. And from all this uh, interaction, we've done, you know, several dozens of uh, 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 kind of pre-training uh, information online sessions with uh, all those universities and contacts. And as a result, we have at least 10 uh, uh, institutions that they say in the near or, or, or mid future, they are ready to start the pilot and we would like more support from EPIC. So we think that's enough uh, uh, momentum and uh, uh, interest uh, to start a EPIC Latin American Caribbean um, um, organization that I, I hope this next year uh, sees yeah. that happen. Um, so that's uh, pretty much all the information I'll, I'll, I'll give on this. Uh, hopefully for next year's conference, we'll, we'll announce uh, the beginning of uh, EPIC Latin America and, 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 a, and a few uh, pilot programs. Okay, terrific. Thank you, Christopher. So uh, as you see, there's a, a ton of stuff going on all over. Unfortunately, we are now right at time. Ada and Marshall, give me instruction on how long is the break that was scheduled to start right now? And how much time can we steal from that break, if any? I've messaged the, that other session in the Whova app, but there are folks that will be joining um, looking or looking to join pretty soon here. So we should move on quickly, like so two minutes. You, two minutes uh okay do you want to take those three minutes so i guess you don't have time for questions uh but i want to give you a chance just to summarize anything you want to say about progress in the last year in the u.s portion of north america um i, I think that overall in the Un united states what we're seeing is there's uh more programs coming into the network to to participate and we're using the new products that Ada presented and Joel mentioned this presentation to get them started. And there's a lot of you who are on this call right now who have really been the champions of the network year in and year out. And you're really evolving and, and expanding what you do in all the different categories and making things higher quality for the communities, for the students, for the faculty. And it's just really impressive to watch as the years go on. We'll highlight that more as the conference goes on. Um, and um, 
uh, yeah, I'm just overwhelmed by the amount of work that's going on between all the regional coordinators uh, in a good way. And uh, I really look forward to seeing how things go on from here. Okay, so uh, with renewed thanks to everyone who presented, uh, uh, Mazimi, Kay, Christopher, and, and now Marshall, uh, I guess we've got to end this here. We can't do questions, but uh, we're, we're, you know how to find us all on the chat or Whova, whatever. We're all available to you throughout the conference to answer any further questions you might have or follow up in any way you want. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ada. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Uh, one quick thing, please consider giving us feedback using the rate session option in the Whova screen for the session we're on. Um, and with that, I'll let you all go and I'll see you at the next session. Great to see you all. <laughs>